So on today's agenda, again, this is will be our focus and what I'd like to say. If you have any questions regarding the presentation or anything we are discussing within the presentation, please feel free to use the chat section. We will answer your questions from from the chat section. So to begin it, begin. Again, our focus today is actually a solution for conservation and our fo main focus is the protected area management. So protected areas are the most biodiversity rich areas around the world. Uh, sadly, they are threatened by a range of pressures. This includes we have land encroachment, illegal and excessive extraction of forest products. We also have factors such as illegal human activities, e.g. Poaching. Now, securing this protection requires a comprehensive management. This includes the support of staff. We have the local communities that will in turn help minimize uh, direct and indirect negative impacts on these valued sites. And all with the goal of sustaining existence of specific species or of biodiversity in general. Now, ESRI has been supporting industries for quite a while now. Industries include or they range from government, government including both local national government. We've got utilities, factoring, transportation. We have the um, electric uh, bit uh, of utilities. We have other industries again in, in, in place. And one of these industries we are focusing today is the conservation. So we have been providing solutions to our customers through pre-configured maps and applications. So basically, or what these solutions do basically amplify the power of ArcGIS and address specific workflows and applications. So gone are the days where you just uh, come to a place, get your software, and that is it. Uh, well, as of uh, today, or what we actually do currently, is that we are providing solutions that uh, will help you as a person or you in an organization to be able to work with the technology in place. So through a dedicated research and development effort of protected area organization uh, practices, we have designed and built uh, a set of solutions for precisely the protected area management. And this includes, we have the ecology, we have uh, the outreach, we also have protection solutions, uh, which will serve the needs of uh, common functions and roles employed by African protected area organizations. So basically here we are getting easy, easily deployable workflows for wildlife monitoring, maintaining infrastructure, engagement with communities and conducting uh, law enforcement patrols. The solution we are providing is leveraging the actions online. So we are providing software to nonprofit organizations. We have programs and also have uh, nature conservation in various countries. And the support we are giving is in terms of a grant. So in the end, organizations or these organizations can be mainly focused on services and understanding the system through, through training. So what you're providing again in the line, you'll have the users. Users, this could be part of uh, people in your organization or this could be the public where you want to share information we have the various stakeholders and any partner you're working with and how do they have access to information or anything shared from your account this is through applications so they have relevant applications created for uh, industries serving different purposes and then this information is shared to uh, whoever needs to know about this information. So to now focus on these solutions, one that is uh, very familiar 
Uh, I know people have been working with protection. Uh, I will just brush through it, but also before I get to that, we have field operations. When I talk about field operations, this is involves more on data collection. When we need information, how do we retrieve this information? So apart from just searching the web, of which again the platform offers you uh, offers you the capability of being able to retrieve or get information from the community, people are sharing information worldwide. You as an organization have the capability of going to the field, capturing data and then using this information. We also have new tools being provided. Um, right now, if you've worked with the platform, I know you're very aware of some uh, tools used for data collection. This includes the survey one to three. We also have the collector for ArcGIS. And then for others, if you've heard of this, we also have navigation, basically help you to do your navigation in the field. But there are others that are also coming up. We have Tracker. In tracking, so this one will help again in uh, tracking. We also have quick capture. So how quick capture works? Uh, if I need, if I'm on a ride, and then for instance, I just put something that is happening in the field, I can quickly just capture that information without having to fill quite many details, and then this information is relayed uh, to a specific app or to the specific people responsible. And these people responsible, how do they view this information? We all know uh, or are quite familiar with tools such as the dashboard. We also have Explorer. And then not leaving out or not forgetting, we also have other tools such as Workforce for ArcGIS to help in um, planning and uh, management. Now for the solutions, I'm going to start with something here very familiar. This is protection, more on uh, tracking of illegal activities. So illegal activities within protected areas has been a primary driver of species decline. So here we are looking at poaching activities, cutting down trees. Uh, these are some of the examples of uh, illegal activity. Now we have solutions that will help in managing uh, such. So capture and manage protection incidences, um, monitor the status of these protection operations within and around their protected areas. Uh, we are capturing illegal activities. So the apps revolve around what I had mentioned before, full data collection apps, and then apps that, uh, apps that you can use again to display information or the metrics of the information obtained. So we have the survey one to three. It can be used for capturing illegal activity and then display this on a on a dashboard. And then we can we also have one called a manager just to show you the status and the progress. For instance, if there's an illegal activity in the field and uh, you want to see if it is being followed up, is it a case that's being followed up? You can have this uh, in a manager and then the relevant uh, staff managers can view this and just monitor really what is happening with each case in the field. So as I said, I know uh, the uh, most people are quite familiar with this because with the solutions, this is what was started with the protection. So for the demo, I'll just go straight to the demo. I will brush through it and then we can continue seeing other applications in place. OK, so to start it off here, um, I have the ArcGIS solutions page where we have solutions already pre-configured for various industries. As I said, the, we are working with very many industries across just to, to get the realistic view of really what's happening and what tools can be of beneficial to these organizations. Uh, to get the solutions, solutions.actgs.com, and then from here you can be able to search or just go to the solution that uh, you're working with. Here right now I'm working, looking at the ArcGIS solutions for conservation, which we have the three of them right now. We have ecology, protection, and the outreach. So my focus uh, was uh, protection. As I said, I know most people have walked through the protection solution, but for those who haven't, please, uh, 
feel free again to inquire if you need more information on the same. So when you have these solutions, you what you get from them are the applications, as I mentioned earlier, we have a dashboard, we have uh, data collection tools, we have got maps, we have got layers and groups again created for, for this. Now, when you deploy this solution, you can find it within your Access Online account. Everything that is participating or every item that is participating in the uh, solution provided. Um, so here, for instance, I have uh, the items and then just giving me some bit of details. Now, also the good thing when you deploy the solutions, it creates or we get a group from it. So for instance, here I have, mm, let me choose the protection incident dashboard. Uh, information here, sharing level, the owner, and then the group right beside it where I'm just hovering with my mouse, we see there's a group that is attached so okay. looking further at these groups here i have the groups participating so within each group you can have specific members be it patrol members be it you, some of the staff within just add them to the groups and then let them participate in that uh, solution you're trying to to work with or the data you're trying to to, to collect or even the project so all of these, as I say, we are working with Access Online. And I, to mention is that we are not also fixated on Access Online. If you need to scale up, you need uh, something uh, more to be done. We also have enterprise solution in place. So you can, as an organization, you can be able to have different options to work with. So just an overview of the platform. We have the enterprise, we have Access Enterprise, we have the Access Online Solutions, and then we also have the desktop solutions. So all these, depending again with your organization needs, can all be factored in. Now, getting into the protection, I'm starting with the data collection. So this is an incident reporter just to uh, tell or view what, uh, what incidences are actually happening. So this is with regard to poaching and then we have evidence and the tip. So let me just click on poaching and then we we'll see what next. So here I can see various um, activities, illegal activities with regard to animal collection, charcoal burning, plant collection uh, and all that. And then there is also evidence. Evidence here we have the camps, for instance, yeah. the carcass. Uh, and then we also have sounds of illegal activity and any tracks. And then also further, we have the tips. Now, the good thing about this is that you can reconfigure it to what you want. It's not permanent, it's not fixed. Everything can be reconfigured to exactly what you want to achieve as an organization. So for instance, poaching, if I was just to brush through it very quick, um, if I select poaching and then I select an uh, illegal activity, for instance, there was animal collection, how many have been arrested? You can just give a number, a random number three. How many have escaped? Let me leave it at none. And then the purchase weapons, what was really captured from there? I can say there's a firearm and any other item seized. So just at random, I can say animals. And then right here, it tells me I can take the photo. And then also I can take a photo of the item seized give just a brief description of, re of really what was happening or how you came about to, to be involved in such an incident. Give a date or provide a date. So this one I can leave it as default and then take the incident location. So within your phone, the good thing is that when I say use location, it will use the current location. So right here, I'm okay, I'm using my laptop, but I can just type um, a place. So let me go to Maasai and then just zoom to it. Again, I'm repeating from your gadgets. It's already uh, GPS enabled, hopefully GPS enabled if you're using smartphone, so it will capture your location um, and then automatically. So from there you can um, just proceed into submission. So when I click submit, all this data now can be viewed in what we call a dashboard. So here I get a dialog saying successful. And then this is the incident dashboard. 
Now looking at this incident dashboard, we have uh, the map as the center stage. And then I have a bit of information on my left, such as any carcasses, incidents, and then just sort my information or filter my information by, by date, for instance. And on my further right, I have all the incidences. So right near here, we can see an incident. Let me just refresh um, so that we see, we get the latest information. So here's learning. Yes. So from nine, we now can see the incidents are ten, and then I can just sort. I need uh, incidences for today. So here I have the purchase incidences. I one was submitted earlier, and then one I've just submitted uh, a few minutes ago. So this is how we work with the, this information. Now, when I click on an incident, we can see some bit of information that, hey, the status here has been submitted or is it in progress or completed? Now, let's say you're following up on the case. Your manager needs to, to do assignment, really know what is happening. Now we have the dashboard manager just to view all this progress. So again, I'm also going to refresh this. So it will state the incident that has just been reported and then I can be able as a manager just change that hey we are following up on this case so it's already in progress and then just give some extra notes to say who's really for instance handling this case or really what's happening so here it is the latest when I click on this it shows me where I recorded it and then here I have the details view the submitted in progress or completion has just been submitted. I can still view the incident details, the one that was collected. So I will just again go back to my manager and then here I can edit. So let's say uh, we are looking into it. So I'll say in progress, the status date as of today, and then lots being worked on. So I just have this information and then we we can now monitor the progress. So you can see now right now it's in progress. So this is protection incident manage. Now to proceed. We have other new uh, solutions. One of them is the ecology. So protected areas as we all know, contain some of the most spectacular wildlife in the world and the protection of the habitats uh, from extreme pressures is very, very critical. So these populations may be monitored for a variety of reasons. Uh, we have uh, game management, species may be endangered or threatened uh, ecological health status. Now to monitor this animal production, then information about this animal's need to be collected and we have tools that are, can help in this. So for such as we have what we call a rapid reporter. Just to explain it just again, as I explained before, you are in the field, you need to collect or fetch something very fast without having to get into integrities about the details. So you can just do it very quickly. So this one is very efficient, especially when you're working with the uh, observations. So you're monitoring animal populations. Uh, I'm on a drive. I've just put in the, some elephants here. I just uh, do very quickly. I've just put it on them at this place. And then what it does, it stores this information in your device. So when you're ready, when you're done with your trip, just click send, and then all this information is relayed back to the office, for instance. Then we have now a longer uh, version of the survey just to collect uh, more details about the animals you've viewed. So for instance, I've just seen a tiger or a cheetah was, have I spotted that the females, are the juveniles, what is their health condition? So these are some of the info, information that you can uh, use. And then all this information is viewed on a dashboard. 
So let's just see the practical bit of it. So here we have wildlife management. This just gives a brief description uh, and tells what you'd be getting, uh, dashboards, uh, reporters, uh, the maps and the layers. So we're going to go to the quick capture. So I'm going to log in into my phone. Just give me a minute, I connect to my phone. So here I'm going to go to maximize this and then quick capture. So this is the reporter. Now, let's say I'm imagining I'm on a drive and then I just need to map or pinpoint where I've seen or spotted animals in the field. So I start my application and then from here I have the various animals. So for instance, let's see I've just seen uh, elephants. So total animals, let me give an estimate of three and then I say done. So when I do or click on the elephant, on my top for the right, I have the data. So here it tells me that is the information uh, that has just been recorded. Now, as I continue adding more more information, it will actually uh, store this information in the background. So for instance, I drive again, I see some antelopes. I can say I've seen around six, as I say done. So we can see just here at the top for the right, this information is being added. So let me just add one more. Let me say giraffe. So I've seen five of them, done. So this information is uh, uh, shown or captured up there. Again, your accuracy is very, very important in this. Uh, sorry. This one has just lost my information. Um, my device. Sorry, let me just. OK, so let me just pick one more. Mm, so I've seen. Uh, let me just take a random. So this one I've seen two. Done. Then yeah, so there and then I send this information. So when I send the records. I will be able to view this information on a screen. So let me minimize this and then go back to my other application. Now that one was the short version. Then we have the longer version uh, of reporting. So here we have the uh, observation. I can have the specific type of animal, for instance, antelope, and then the observation type of seen it visual the date automatically then where is the location again if you're using your gadgets this it should locate the precise location uh, automatically here i'm just typing for demo purposes and then just notes a bit of information seen two to them or whichever number and then I go to next. So here, how many counts of the have you seen? For instance, female, so approximately I see one. The condition looked healthy, so let me leave at that. And then the male, I can say I've also seen one, but a very poor condition. And then unknown, I, I don't have any unknown. Unknown maybe appears when you really don't know how to differentiate between male and female, so you can give that information and then I just go next. So here I have the juvenile counts. Uh, again, with their conditions, uh, I'll leave it as default and then just go next. And then from here, I can be able to capture a photo. So within your gadget, you'll have the option of taking a picture. So here, since I'm using my uh, machine, I can uh, scroll actually to where the where I've actually captured these pictures. So very quickly, uh, let me just pick something random. So let me see, I've said an in, and then open. 
So it captures for me the image and then I get, it asks me if I need an additional photo. So I'll say no and then I just submit in this information. So when I'm done submitting this information again, we can view it in a dashboard. So it tells me OK. And here are the uh, sightings. Just like what we're looking at protection, I can filter this information based on the date or animal or whichever, whichever observation. So I'm just going to reload this. What and the difference is it will and then so it will give me the information, what updated information. Different? So there you go. I can see the number has just rise. And then from here I can filter even by by date just to see today how many. So it actually adds up all this information. I did get some, I did add some earlier. And then so see the number of total observations. So what this is all different? information you can be able to to view it on the uh screen. Now to proceed. To proceed, I have uh, the next solution, which is now outreach or managing the wildlife conflicts. Now, the coexistence, as we know, between humans and mammals across Africa has led to human wildlife conflict huh? uh, due to the competition for limited natural resources. So we have conflicts between people and the wild animals occur when the action of one has a negative again on the on the other. So such conflicts have been recorded throughout, not just in Africa, the whole world. Factoring terrestrial, aquatic, uh, aerial, all these have been factored in land uh, and it has involved a wide variety of animal species. Now, from a conservationist uh, perspective, these conflicts pose a threat to numerous species. And so there's need for actions and then methods also to mitigate them for the benefit of both parties involved. Now, mitigation, we have applications that can or help in, in this. And here again, we have data collection tools. And then how do you display this information on uh, a dashboard? And then from there, you are also able to generate what we call area reports from the information that you can visibly see on the uh, screen or whatever information that you're getting from the field. Now to take you through this. So here we have the conservation outreach. I have um, some details here about the solution. So we have applications, catering across data collection tools, and then we also have uh, mapping applications. We also have feature layers, and then we also have groups. Now let's see some of these applications. So here I have a data collection tool just to report on the conflicts that are happening in the field. So what type of conflict are you seeing? For instance, is it damage structure, vehicle, livestock, or whichever you, you wish to add? So I'll say livestock attack. In my instance, I've seen several livestock attacks, so I'll use that for, for the demo. And then the date, and then leave it at day of the time, let me leave it at that default and then now we go to the assessment. So what kind of damage or injury? Uh, no damage, minor, severe, let me leave it at severe damage. And then is the park investigation really required for this? Let me say yes, because I've seen there's a, a lot of damage, so it needs to be investigated and then the notes. Something just to detail really what's happening. So I can type here, um several animals killed so these are cows and goats so the good thing also if you're having your users in the field 
there is the option if they have now the signing credentials, you can know who's really reporting this information. So when uh, information is relayed back to you, you know who actually submitted this information. Then the location, again, just to use my previous method. So I'm going to zoom to it and then just pick a different location. And then I just go to next. So here it tells me capture a photo. So let me let me take one. So here there are several bots and cows skills, and then I open this. Do I need an additional photo for this? No. And then I go to next. So the reporter information. So this one has whoever's reporting. So let me just type your name, the phone number, and then the email. And then address or village, name and village uh, default, and then I can just give a signature. So I'm just going to do something very random. And then submit this information. So when I submit, it gives me a dialog to say yes, thank you. And then all this information is related to a dashboard. So I'm going to refresh this again once more just to give me the accurate picture of uh, what's really happening in the field. So, yeah, so here we have. The assessment, for instance, filters that you can work with. As I said, this is not limited. Whatever you want to see displayed can be recon reconfigured for that. Does it need a pack investigation? Um, here the ones that are selected yes if you do that then you uh, should be able to get this information so here on my right all of them actually said yes so they need investigations now this can be followed up by a manager again refreshing so i can see the status yes we need back investigation so what was really happening give me some evidence of uh, uh, what was really happening in the field and uh, who is involved or who whatever what is really happening with regard to this specific case so all this can be done in the manager so for instance here i have here the latest just with regard to the date and time and then he's giving me some details yes investigation required the type the date and some information and then also the photos that are relating to to this so here we can be able to to track and see uh, again just editing and then just saying for instance it will be submitted is it in progress i can even mark this as completed and then say the status now uh, what people compensated or really what happened to the situation. So you just give a bit of information and then the status, uh, the date of that, and then just save this information. So you are now able to close this record and say yeah, this has already been worked. So you can be able now to monitor this uh, information or investigations all the way uh, from one uh, application. We also have the reporting tools. So here I have all the data that I've been receiving. And then I just want to, to get a quick view or a quick report from what's been happening around. So this is also possible and this is what we are exploring. We're going to explore as of the moment. So again, just refreshing to uh, bring my view up to date and then here. You have some data or information. Now, up on my top right, I have what we call uh, you can have bookmarks. You can use bookmarks just to, to note some various areas. You also have filters. So filters can say uh, I need to, to just view information about a particular event. Is it poaching? Are there evidence that have been provided? Any conflicts? So let me, if I come here to all the wildlife observations and then check it, 
So it filters on the map and then tells me the world level observations. This is again in reference or looking at the um, symbology provided. Then from here, I can be able to look at the bears maps. So I topographical here because again, it's a bit light. You can go with imagery. And then you also have what you call the perform analysis tab. So you can have your data, all your data here, and then just perform analysis. So we have things like um, creating buffers. We have uh, extraction of data. We have got hotspots. Excuse me. So, so something you should not, depending on the data that is shown on the screen, this one determines what analysis or what tool will be active. For instance, if I hover just around these um, aggregate uh, points, so it's telling me in the dialog that this tool is not available because the map doesn't contain the required feature layer. So I'll, ha I'll have to go with something different. So for instance, I just want to see the density of the animals uh, around. So where which sightings have we spotted the most animals? So here I have the calculated density. And then here I need the observations. The count will I leave it at default. And then in my options, let me choose a study area. So let me just draw this. And then output square kilometers. And then the result name. And then this result will be saved into my contents page in just online, and then I just say run analysis. So here, when it does the analysis, I'll be able to see that information displayed directly on the screen. And then I can go ahead and print out this information. Other things that are also provided, we have a table just to show the incidences right now. Here we can have them, the Portuguese incidences, evidence, tips, uh, wildlife conflicts, and uh, observations. So these are data that have been provided and uh, everything. In short, if you are with protection, uh, there is the outreach bit. All these, you can collect this data and then monitor it again from one uh, screen. So here it's my data succeeded we can see this so it's telling me where the animal spotting uh, have been so you can filter even per, per month per day depending on how you prefer so with the outputs if i just click on this it should be able to open for me these the details of uh, of this information now going back i can also choose to do the printing So I need this in a map. I can quickly create a map from here. So the layout, let me choose uh, a landscape and then PDF format. There's advanced options, but I'm not going to this right now. And then all I have to do is a print. So it's creating for me the, the map very quickly, and then we'll be able to view it. So there it is. So we have the map, the legend, uh, and uh, some details about what I've just printed. So it's not perfect, as I said, but you can play around with the advanced options and get to what you're looking for. We also have another option here called the create reports. So I just need to get some bit of information, for instance, taking an example of wildlife observations. So here I know I have protection incidents, conflicts, but I just need observations. So now from this, I will just draw the area of interest. Um, so I need for from this pack specifically, uh, I can enter the search results and then I just say uh, report. So here my report is available and then I can choose to download this information or choose again to print this information. So I'm choosing to print so that it opens directly on my web browser. So here it is, it will actually display a map right uh, above here and then, yes, there we go. And then some details about the observations that have been seen. So you can work around with the different factors depending on your data. Now, 
until I will last or to finalize this. We have other tools. Sorry, we have other tools that are provided. We have what we call tracker. Mm, it has been a new tool introduced. So it's a mobile solution actually that will allow you to capture locations of mobile users, monitor really where they are and analyze where they've been. So here we are looking at Mondays of Patel effort, for instance, distance walked um, and providing indices of encounters in the field. So records, it also records without a data connection. And then the other tools we have is the storing tell, story maps. You want to the public or people to know really what's happening in the conservation. You have something to report. So what's the best way even to approach this? By using story maps, providing you a captivating way of showing information or creating your reports. So for this, I'll just show some examples of what you have been doing. So here I have, for instance, here I have uh, one saying they struggle to save elephants from a devastating wave of ivory poaching. So instead of having a whole PDF report or just to tell people what's really going on, we have the information provided, we have text, we have um, media, digital media, this is the videos, we have the images provided, and then you can just tell your story. Another one here we have for art project, identifying conservation priorities. So when I scroll on this, uh, we can see uh, some bit of information about uh, the, what they're trying to relay on conservation priorities, imagery, pictures, high resolution pictures, very good pictures, and then what really half art project is. Here the people participating, we have again just telling you more about species and then further on continuing telling us more about the species and then the best part of it we have uh, embedded maps so the good thing also is not just static these maps are interactive and you can work with them um, directly from this one page just tell your story using this another one we have here is for uh, KWS displaying the parks. So here we can see you have national parks, reserves, marine parks, sanctuaries. So for instance, if I was to click on Mount Kenya and then just zoom to it, so I can be able to tell here it is and then just give a brief description about Mount Kenya. So I can be able to see these national parks and know what's good about them. They are different. Uh, tools or templates you can use for your story map telling, just as I've shown there are others. Here we have national reserves. And then we also have marine parks. We also have sanctuaries. So it's just a matter of exploring. And then I have one finally here done by, we have uh, National Conservancy, I can see they were involved. So how Coca-Cola, National Conservancy and water and sanitation there for the urban poor are collaborating to build Nairobi's water resiliency. So again, this is a video we can see, an aerial photo. Uh, you can even have um, YouTube videos if you've uploaded uh, anything that you'd wish for people to see. Let it be captivating. Let the maps, digital media again, pass this information to you, uh, out so that your readers or your viewers can really say or tell what you're trying to to showcase. So I think uh, this is it with the presentations. So I have some resources. That say you can be able to use. So here we have uh, solutions that how to apply conservation. Again, we are available. We we will help um, to set up or get or, or for you to be able to get more information about the 
conservation and solutions. So be feel free please to reach us to reach out to us and we'll be able to help. So for now I can take around three questions. I hope uh, you've been utilizing the chat section and your questions are being answered. For now I can take around three questions and then I think we can proceed. 